speaking of coaching, right? So seeing that you, you are a coach and you do the personal training, but how did you, or what was the driving desire, thoughts, mechanism behind you wanting to coach? Was it like, well, I've had these experiences and I want to be able to help other people that, that are struggling with the same things I've struggled with, or was it, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's a combination to it, but yeah. what was like, yeah, just tell me. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Uh, no, it, it's many things, but uh, the first thing was just that I was, I, I, I mean, when, when I could see clearly how I had been living my life and mm-hmm. why I had just been wasting it and that I didn't have to be that way, you know, mm-hmm. I could actually change this, you know, it was mm-hmm. a huge realization about myself, uh, first of all, but uh, then also, you know, I, I found this, I had always been uh, a hardcore atheist. We talked about the nihilism a mm-hmm. bit. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and it's, it was so funny how I just started believing in God from like within, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I, felt, I felt like I, I did not do all of this on my own, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just started realizing this thing sort of that uh, you, can, you basically have two choices in the world, which is... Uh, being a force for good or a force for mm-hmm. evil, like mm-hmm. leave a good effect or a bad effect mm-hmm. on the world. And I, I want to be a force for good, you know. And so these things that it turned out that I'm really good at, like with mm-hmm. the training and nutrition fasting that has helped me so much, uh, I just want to pass it on to other people, really. So yeah, th- I would say that that's the main motivator. But mm-hmm. there is a little part to that when you get into all of this and see the progress in yourself, you get a little addicted. To the mm-hmm. progress right yeah uh, for sure and, and when when you now uh, also if you maybe um kind of shrunk your ego and realize mm-hmm. it's not all about you you can kind, kind of get a similar effect of like mm-hmm. helping people uh helping other people it kind of feels like helping yourself so mm-hmm. a little a little like selfish reason for for it is like mm-hmm. i i just when, when i can't make as much gains myself anymore it's fun to make with other people too yeah man a hundred percent. And like that spirit, spiritual element, like we touched upon it before. Um, mm. And not now you just blew it wide open. So I want to make uh, sure see that before we talk about the, the coaching sure. uh, more, but it's such a, so to backtrack throughout history to a certain degree, it doesn't matter if it was a religion, a society or a tribe. Fasting has been part of human experience yeah. since the dawn of mankind. Absolutely. And a lot of people paint this picture of hunter-gatherer societies as they lived in constant scarcity, which was not the case. Like mm-hmm. these guys weren't stupid. Like they know where the food was and they <laughs> yeah. lived close to their food uh, sources, right? So the Native Americans are a great example of that. Like they weren't worried, man. There were herds of <laughs> buffaloes almost everywhere. Like unless they, you know, went off on an expedition that went sideways they were near their food source. So for them already, it was like their fasting practices, which are very well documented, right? They were for spiritual reasons. And Mm -hmm. yeah, like this thing, there is like that force of good, as you said, and you do connect to something internally that makes you feel um, not your presence per se, but a a presence of a higher power. And a lot of people have that experience. I've had that experience when fasting, but I've had that when meditating. Mm. Um, And that's some of the, the, one of the things that, that got me on a very spiritual path. And I don't really, so we come from the same line of thinking, right? The nihilism, because that's, you know, part of being depressed. But as I came out of that and started listening to philosophy and meditating and fasting, then I connect it to that higher power, right? And Mm -hmm. from the Stoics, right, I've learned, okay, like we can call it God, they can call it Zeus, they call it nature, Mm -hmm. the universe. It really doesn't matter what you decide to call it or the the way you see it. But it does matter to me personally that people get that experience. And Mm -hmm. that's why, like, I have the big smile on my face because I love to hear that from people like, wow, you know, like you connected to something so profound. It changed you as a person from just not eating. And sometimes it is that simple, right? Because it does take away a lot of this um, internal or like internal inputs, right? Stimulus that you need to constantly process. That's the inflammation really in 
all of the biofeedback. And when that goes away, right, you just go to a state that allows you to, as you said, see clearly, but also connect to things that are really hard to imagine in the first place. And secondly, mm -hmm. even harder for me to explain because yeah. I can't give you this experience by talking about it. And I'm a watering down the experience by trying to explain it to a certain degree, but it should inspire people to a certain degree to like go like, Hmm, no, that that's interesting. How somebody came from complete nihilism, atheism to believing in God or a higher power, right? Connecting to yeah. something else that is within, within all of us. So I want to, yeah, highlight that because it, I mm -hmm. think it's so fascinating. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's so interesting. Like, I, I made a video once that was called um, "How How to Change Someone's Opinion" or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but the the point was really how, with many things, like that, there are people that mm -hmm. that are like um, humble and uh, ready mm -hmm. to change their opinion, but. Uh, uh, about a lot of things people pretend to be able to you know but uh -huh. uh, they they have decided they're not going to change their mind mm -hmm. uh, no matter what you uh, tell them and stuff i was like this with god you know like mm -hmm. I, I would be confrontational about like where's your proof uh, <laughs> uh, 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 like this mm -hmm. um but then i experienced something that made it like undeniable to me uh, mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's very cool to even see about myself know that that how mm -hmm. how how little I believed in God, how, like, how smart I felt about it. I figured it mm -hmm. out, you know, no, no, there's no way. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that a person like that can change completely uh, yeah, about man. the thing like that. Yeah, it's beautiful. And that's from experience, right? So that's the point. Like, if you have an experience, um, and this is how the human organism work, works, right? You are changed by that experience. You are different before and after which is yeah. like a, a, a deeper line laying point with all of these things and why we're also fervent self experimenters, because I, I want to have a certain type of experience. I'm not sure what I'm going to experience, but I know that I'm going to be changed after. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's a positive thing. And sometimes like the negative you, you, experience becomes a positive thing after yeah, yeah. a while. Right. That's also a thing that when you realize that you can learn something from anything like i, I mentioned exactly. that i mm -hmm. i had some tougher like just personal life things uh, mm -hmm. happening it was very difficult when it was going on but mm -hmm. at the same time e even when it didn't feel all that great i i mm -hmm. knew that i will learn something from this you know yes. uh, and so th that's also a thing and, mm -hmm. and of course this was not something i chose to have an experience mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. just to make the point that mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> It's a good realization to have that uh, mm -hmm. literally anything you go through, you can learn something from. Yeah, man, totally. And that's also something that I would contribute to. Well, th that change of states that you have been in the path that you're on, right? So for a lot of people, because I was in that type of position myself where you were, where you wouldn't have had this type of uh, perspective if mm -hmm. you didn't have these types of experiences. Exactly. Right. So like, if you want to, or want to if that's like oh like i don't experience that type of perspective at all go have some of these experiences with nutrition fasting and exercise and, and yes. you know see how it changes your ability to have these types of perspectives yeah right exactly which exactly. is also like when we speak about these types of experiences that's also you know what you also brought to the table in this conversation when you were talking about the why you got into coaching is that you are essentially giving a person uh, the tools for an experience whether that's yeah. with physical training whether that's with nutrition and fasting right so it's yeah. it's very like a, a lot of these things with coaching is like oh you know here's the program and do this but it's not about that the program no. is just a tool like it's yeah. about what you will experience and feel, right? That will eventually change you and, you know, lead to different things in different levels.